Here we go. Let everybody in the house let out. Shout one. It up before C B B C B B C. Good afternoon. Welcome to Children's BBC. As you can hear, the jingles get more interesting and curious. This one is called Veg Out, and it's by Richard Levins, who lives in a field. No, not really. He lives in a house in Worcester. Thank you for that. Here's your menu this afternoon. <laughs> uh, say hello. Hello. To Harry Jeremy in a moment. Then Bump has something to sing about. That's good to hear in five minutes' time. Then Baba, our glorious elephant, is back. Then take a splash with the animals of Farthing Wood at 4.20. Monkey Island. And the final gripping instalment at a quarter to five. And then at ten past five, more spooky goings on in Dark Season. So there we are. <laughs> Absolutely mad jingle rap, wasn't it? Wait, sorry, there's something wrong with my chair. It keeps going either down like that or up again. It's definitely, it's definitely, if you're watching, engineers, can you mend it, please? It's gone completely up the wall. Now, uh, nice to see pictures of myself in the broom cupboard coming in. These get more curious as well, because this is me, as drawn by Toby Rose, aged six and a half. But thanks for doing it, nevertheless. Say hello now to Harry Jeremy. Hello. <laughs> what a curious little character he is. Uh, don't forget, The Animals of Farthing Wood is on earlier today at 4.20. The return of Baba before that. But on Children's BBC Now, in with a bump. Ha <laughs> ha, a lovely song there. Hopefully getting yourself and obviously bump into a joyful weekend mood. Tomorrow on Live and Kicking, there's top cartoon action as always. Blown to pieces. The lovable Grimmy and Peter Pan and the Pirates tomorrow at 9 o'clock on Live and Kicking. <laughs> Choice stuff, I'd say. Uh, the Animals of Finding Wood on in about 25 minutes' time, the earlier time of 20 past four, only here. And uh, what we're giving away this week as part of a new competition are five mouse outfits. And here's what you do. You put, pop that on your head, you see. And by the time you put that over your body, you look like a mouse. That's good. But now we need to hail the return of the wonderful Baba. Good to see the lovely Baba back. Don't miss the final compelling episode of Monkey Island in 25 minutes time and stay with us to win this Super Mouse's outfit after the animals of Farthing Wood. Well said, Big Fox. Once a hero, always a hero. OK, ready for competition time. How would you like to be suitably dressed as your favourite rodent, the mouse? Well, we have five of these, <laughs> five of these lovely outfits to give away, costumes, uh, or mouse suits even. That's the mask that you slip over your head so you look like the rodent. And uh, here you are, that you slip over your body and you've got all complete with tail. Very nice. The question you need to answer, well, as you know, Vixen is the name of Fox's mate, but what is the name of Scarface's mate, if you know? Answers on a postcard, please, to Animals of Farthingwood Competition, Children's BBC, PO Box 4567, London W12, 6AA. The first correct entries in win that top mouse suit. Now, ready for our final instalment of the gripping Monkey Island. Ta -da. Thank you very much, Malcolm, in Manhattan for those. And next week, another powerful narrated drama begins, and it's called Along a Lonely Road. Headland at Dooney is the end of the world, with the sea on three sides of it breaking in the bays, with only the Humpy Bridge to keep us connected at all. We are the only ones left out on Dooney Headland since the quarrymen went at the end of the war, but if the bridge ever goes down, we'll be in a mess. Along a lonely road from Northern Ireland starts Monday, 4.45 on Children's BBC. And yet, more drama with Dark Season coming up after News Round, with Krishnan presenting that this afternoon. John Major visits Bosnia as an important peace deal is signed by two of the warring sides. A National Science Week gets underway, launched with a big bang. Hello, at last some good news from the war-torn country of Bosnia. After nearly two years of bitter fighting, the hopes of putting an end to the bloodshed are higher than ever. This afternoon, two of the warring sides, the Muslims and Croats, signed a peace pact. It follows yesterday's announcement that the Serbs and Muslims have agreed to partly lift the siege of Sarajevo, the Bosnian capital. Strengthening the moves towards peace, Britain's Prime Minister John Major has today been visiting the British peacekeeping troops in Bosnia. The important agreement was signed by the Bosnian president, Alia Izabegovic, sitting on the left, and Croatia's Franjo Tudjman on the right. 
They'd been invited to the American capital, Washington, by President Clinton. The land the two sides have been fighting over will now be divided up into a number of districts, held together by one central government. Control of the government will be shared by the Croats and Muslims, with each side taking it in turns to lead. Both leaders stressed the need for the Serbs, the third warring side in Bosnia, to join the peace pact. So far, they've refused to take part. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister, John Major, this afternoon announced Britain's giving £12 million of immediate aid to Bosnia. He's there visiting British soldiers. Newsround's Joanna Robinson reports. Mr Major was on a one-day tour of Bosnia. This morning he visited several British army bases. He was briefed by the commanders in charge, but was also keen to talk to ordinary soldiers to find out what they thought about the situation. British troops are in the country as part of the United Nations peacekeeping force. Mr Major said this new peace deal could lead to even more soldiers being sent to Bosnia. Well, there's no doubt that as, uh, as there is an increasing peace, there will be a greater need for troops to monitor that peace. That's undoubtedly the case. This afternoon, Mr Major visited Vitez, where most of the 3,300 British soldiers are based. Until recently, it was the scene of much fighting. The Prime Minister has now flown to the Bosnian capital, Sarajevo, to see for himself what the situation is like after the recent ceasefire. He's the first world leader to visit the city for 18 months. Today's peace deal certainly brings hope that an end to the war in Bosnia could now be in sight. But it's by no means over yet. Some places are still heavily under fire and people are continuing to suffer. Now to Africa, where a British-based charity is trying to help a native tribe survive. Ten years ago, there were 5,000 pygmies. Now only 400 are left in rainforests in the foothills of mountains in western Uganda. Their village is called Bundibugyo. For Newsround, Bill Hamilton reports. Amidst the foothills of the Mountains of the Moon, vast stretches of the Sam Lehi rainforest straddle the equator along Uganda's border with Zaire. It's here the pygmy tribe has lived and hunted for generations. Their methods are still primitive. Their stealth and cunning a proven match for the forest wildlife. But animal migration has meant food is more difficult to come by, forcing them to travel greater distances, exposing their families to greater dangers, and weakening their resistance to disease. If the threat of extinction is now a very real one, then the chief of this pygmy group said he had no intention of abandoning the forest. <laughs> All my forefathers were born in the forest. They lived in the forest and died in the forest. It's the only life we know. I'll die in the forest too. At the invitation of the Ugandan government, agriculturalists have been dispatched by the British-based charity ADRA to teach the pygmies new survival skills. Sweet potatoes and root vegetables will soon supplement their meagre diet. It's proving so successful that this group have decided to resettle on land immediately adjacent to the forest. Basic aluminium roofed shelters have been built to protect mothers and children from wildlife and the cold. There's no question of imposing Western culture on the pygmy tribe. Rather, the aim is to ensure their own culture will survive another generation. This is Bill Hamilton for Newsround in Uganda. Sport now, and it's a big day tomorrow for Welsh Rugby Union fans. If Wales beat England, they'll win the Five Nations Championship outright for the first time in 16 years. For Newsround, Kate Chatsfield reports. Wales have already played three of the four other teams in the championship, Ireland, Scotland and France, and won all their matches. If they do the same tomorrow against England at Twickenham, they'll clinch the championship. They'll also win the Grand Slam, which means they've beaten all four other teams. Wales last did this 16 years ago. To Bennett, it's another try. Touch. Uh, down. England, seen here practicing, have won two games but lost to Ireland. If they beat Wales by more than 16 points, they too could take the title. 
England have thrashed Wales several times in the recent past, but Wales have improved a great deal and reckon they'll be celebrating victory tomorrow. Staying with Wales and the new manager of their football team has been announced. He's Mike Smith and is currently the national team's assistant manager. He was also in charge of the team for six years in the 1970s. Smith replaces John Toshak, who resigned after just 48 days and one match in the job. And finally, science isn't boring, and that's official. The government and British Association for the Advancement of Science today launched Britain's first ever Science Week. It begins on Monday. Yuzhuan's Nick Gardner reports. If you're bored by biology, phased by physics, and chemistry leaves you cold, Science Week is for you. Right, just face the door, no, stand up nice and straight, please. Called SET7, which stands for seven days of science, engineering and technology, a thousand events are taking place across the country. Today, there was a chance to run your own nuclear power station, give Eurotunnel a hand with some engineering, and steer an environmentally friendly gas-powered van by computer. Let us count backwards from three. Science Minister William Walgrave opened the week with a bang. So has Set 7 been organised because children find science boring? I think too many do, but I hope this week we can demonstrate that that really is wrong. Science is not only fun, um, it is difficult, but then the most difficult things are the most worthwhile. Children at the launch had mixed feelings about science. At school it's boring, but here it's interesting because there are lots of things to do. I enjoy doing experiments and I like um, in questions and things about animals and different topics. Sometimes in the classroom it gets a bit boring. I think this is a good idea. Today's launch has proved that as long as science is fun, children are interested. And if the rest of the week is as good as this, it should be a great success. This is Nick Gardner, for News Round, outside the Natural History Museum in London. And that's all from Newsround for this week. I'll see you again on Monday. Till then, bye-bye. And wishing you, Christian, a very pleasant weekend, which includes your very own consumer programme, Short Change, on Sunday. Come on, let's face it, we've all been tempted, haven't we? Maybe to check out queues a bit too long, or maybe you're just feeling a little bit fed up. So what do you do? You pop a few things in your pocket and wander out the shop. Because it doesn't really matter, does it? Wrong. Have a guess. Go on. How much do you reckon shoplifting costs British shops every year? Find out in Short Change. Shoplifting under surveillance. Sunday morning, 10.55 on Children's BBC Two. Your very own consumer programme, so be sure to catch it. And Philippa will be revealing the winner of the It'll Never Work competition, which we ran about three or four months ago before Christmas. And she'll be doing that at about 8 minutes to 11, so right before short change. So if you're inventing something, it could be your lucky weekend. Stand by for news on tomorrow's Live and Kicking coming up after more drama in Dark Sea. Whoa, chilling stuff. Uh, more dark season next week, so don't forget, next time you get into a car, check behind your seat. As always, live and kicking crime, Emma Forbes. Thank you, Toby. Tomorrow on Live and Kicking, PC Dave Quinnan and WPC Polly Page in the bill, they'll be taking your inquiries live here in the studio. And we will be reporting on a sighting of top pop band Worlds Apart here in TC7. We'll also give you the opportunity to question Desmond Lynham when he is detained in the hot seat. And we'll be taking Dee Reed for a driving test and listening to their pleasant music. And we'll be looking for five new owners for these, plus lots of other top competitions and prizes. We also have reason to believe that Peter Pan and Grimmy will be involved in some serious cartoon Action. Shane and Peter will be also on the run with some criminally gungy games. And if you thought all those jokes were bad, wait till Rats' Chip Shop, when we'll give you the chance to win your very own limited edition pink Game Boy. No. So, don't miss Lime and Kicking tomorrow morning. You're not in. If you're out, it's a crime to miss it. It evening would all. be a crime. <laughs> evening all. Now, Emma, John, Andy, Trev and Simon, can you stay with us for a moment? Yes. yes. Good. Yes. Uh, yes. Pleased to see it. Pleased to hear it. Now, as you know, <laughs> later on tonight, or you may not, there's a song for Europe on. 
Yes. yes. You're aware well, of that. Of course we knew yes. that. We yep. were thinking of entering John, but we changed our mind. Criminal, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Would you mind being acting up as our sort of panel of judges on today's Broom Cupboard Jingle? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think we'd yep. like to very much, actually. Yep. Okay. By the way, Emma and John, you'll be very pleased to hear there are lyrics on this one this week. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. So our words sank in last week, then, did they? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here it comes. I'm just going to pop yeah. it on here. This is courtesy of Jenna, Kate, mm -hmm. Joy, Joanna, and Rosanna, the rapping quid from Aberdeen. Right. <laughs> right. So okay. here it goes. We're you can hear it. Okay. Okay, yeah. Here we are. <laughs> Did you like it? Oh, you I like excellent. Oh, excellent. Uh, excellent. I like the I, yeah, the eight. Let's have a look at the marks. And you've got a six there. Oh, naught from PC. No, 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 oh, sorry. no, 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 no. No, it's, it's meant to be. It's actually oh, 9.60,000. Yeah. It's actually 60,000 or 600,000. All right. <laughs> Thank Evening you, you guys. Enjoy your program tomorrow morning. We will. Bye. 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 Don't miss it. Evening Evening tomorrow morning. See you at nine talk back, Toby. Oh, they're still talking to me. See you tomorrow at nine. And uh, I'm back on Monday with Bump at 3.45. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye. Right then, we're afraid to say that we couldn't quite run that trailer, so I'm not quite sure how much time will I have here. I think we're just about to go into Neighbours any moment now, so get prepared for live ice skating from Ramsey Ice Rink. <laughs> <laughs>